There was a big win for unions in Staten Island when an Amazon warehouse voted to unionize, which is another amazing step towards reunionizing America. One of the sad trends over the last few decades has been the decrease in union participation in the United States, but somewhat recently we've seen a resurgence of these efforts and some pretty widely publicized successful union efforts at very prominent companies. And so having this done successfully at super famous companies is a really good thing. It'll most definitely cause a ripple effect where now all of these other companies and their employees see the unionizations at these famous companies and try it themselves. One of the efforts that's been pretty publicized is at Starbucks stores. Quote, when a Starbucks in Buffalo was the first to vote to unionize, workers at 16 Starbucks stores have followed suit. One Starbucks picketer in Denver said, we have a lot of intimidation and a lot of efforts to stop us, but we are here. And over 200 more have petitioned to vote. We also saw efforts at John Deere and now the big behemoth itself, Amazon. Quote, three weeks ago, there was news that stunned the business world about America's second largest employer, JFK, a massive Amazon warehouse on Staten Island that employs 8,300 people voted to unionize. This is so exciting because if you can unionize at Amazon, not only is that great inspiration to people at a bunch of different companies, but also it shows that it's possible because you're able to do it at Amazon, you can pretty much do it anywhere. And what led to this particular Amazon warehouse getting unionized is actually a very interesting story. So in 2020, during the start of COVID, Christian Smalls, who was an employee, felt like management and Amazon was not properly protecting the workers in this warehouse from COVID. And so, quote, in March 2020, he'd organized a walkout to protest the lack of face masks and other COVID gear at JFK 8. Amazon fired him and in a leaked memo, an executive called him not smart or articulate. So it is just such perfect karma that an executive said such a stupid racist thing because the executives also expressed interest in making Christian Smalls the face of a unionization effort, thinking that because he's not smart or articulate as they said, he would be a really bad leader for this type of effort. Well, it's just so satisfying because they said that about him, they tried to make him the face of the effort and it was successful. And another great piece of karma is that all he wanted initially was not a union. He just wanted management to implement the proper safety protocols to make sure all the workers wouldn't get COVID. But then they refused to do that and it led Christian Smalls to wanting to unionize so that the workers could have more power for situations like this. And so because they didn't listen to the concerns of their employees, now they had something happen that they definitely wouldn't prefer, which is now the employees have even more power. Because he was one of the leaders that likely led to a massive positive push towards unions in one of the largest companies in the world. Let's give Christian Smalls a quick chance to talk about why this happened. My journey started two years ago when um, I let a walk out over COVID-19 after um, Amazon failed to protect us. It, you know, we had no PPE, no facial mask, uh, no cleaning supplies, no real guidance, uh, no social distancing. And I tried to go through the proper channels, but the company uh, neglected to, uh, you know, hear us out. And ultimately, they just wanted to uh, stop me from organizing by cornering team, uh, just me and nobody else. So I let that walk out, which terminated me two hours later. And um, from that moment, you know, I traveled the country, advocated for workers' rights. You know, I didn't give up, especially after uh, Jeff Bezos himself signed up on a, a campaign calling me not smart or articulate to make me the face of the unionizing efforts. So again, simply because management did not listen to the needs of their employees, they are now going to have to deal with an organized block of employees in the form of a union that has more leverage. And we're already seeing the effects of this. Another Amazon warehouse, pretty much across the street in Staten Island, is going to vote to unionize. And Christian Smalls is now leading up the effort, going around trying to help other locations unionize. So I know a lot of people have mixed feelings on unions. Generally, I'm very pro-union, and the reason for that is as an individual worker, you have so little power compared to the executives and management, and so getting to group up all the employees and advocate for your interests, I think, is a very good thing. Especially in a company like Amazon that's such a goliath, giving people a fighting chance to be treated well with dignity is something we should all be supportive of. 
So huge congrats to the Staten Island Warehouse and good luck. We're crossing our fingers for the across the street Staten Island Warehouse. And let's hope that a successful unionization effort at one of the largest companies in the country and in the world will inspire many more employees across the country to try it themselves. And hopefully we're at the beginning of many decades of increased union participation and increased power of the average worker. Here's what else you need to know today. Biden requests an additional $33 billion from Congress in aid to Ukraine amidst the continuation of Russia's brutal invasion. The Oklahoma legislature passes a bill that bans abortion after six weeks that is modeled after the Texas law that requires the enforcement of citizens suing people who have had abortions or anyone involved. A report comes out showing that behind closed doors, Biden is seriously considering canceling some student debt sooner rather than later. And finally, China imposes lockdowns due to COVID-19 in 27 cities that will affect 165 million people. Be well, everybody.